maggots. They make you squirm. But what a healthy meal they'd be. Fly flesh encased in a shell. Inside the shell, there is nothing but pure protein, which magically reassembles to make a fly. And that is why birds love them. It's why fish love them. And it's why we're going to save the future with them. Save the future with these guys? Well, yes, because food in the future is a looming problem. Over the next few decades, we face a serious challenge. Indeed, some are saying it's humanity's greatest challenge, feeding the world by 2050. Now, believe it or not, these guys, maggots, could be part of the solution. And we'll find out more about that a little later. But first, consider a few very disturbing facts. Spaceship Earth currently has seven billion people and growing at a staggering rate. Every day, there are 200,000 extra mouths to feed. By 2050, only 37 years away, there'll be nine and a half billion of us, all wanting to eat. It's a serious problem. The bottom line is when people are starving, they're going to do anything they can to, to get food. Um, and it causes instability, it causes political instability, it causes instability around the globe. And the food challenge is greater than you might think. What's growing even faster than the world's population is the world's middle class. Thank you. By 2050, there'll be billions of extra mouths wanting to eat middle class food like steaks, pork and chicken, not the vegetarian meals they do today. So we'll not only have to feed the extra people, but feed the extra animals too to provide the meat. It is less efficient energetically to actually grow crops to feed to, say, a beef cow to actually feed a human than it is to grow a crop directly to feed a human. The bottom line is, by 2050, the population will grow by 30%, but will have to produce 100% more food. And the bad news doesn't stop there. Urban sprawl is taking prime agricultural fields. So it's more food with less land. And less water to produce it with. Um, the competition for water, growing populations, finite or dwindling water supplies on planet Earth. And then there's the second half of the century. The challenge of food production is not going to finish in 2050. You will grow to about 9.5 billion people by 2050 and that's not even the, the the maximum the maximum is probably about 14 billion at about 2100 and we haven't even mentioned climate change yet the world does face a big challenge but we have been challenged before it was deemed that the, the world would run out of food certain countries would run out of food by about 1970 was the prediction um, and then along came the green revolution Artificial fertiliser, better irrigation and high yield crops dramatically increased grain production. But revolutions come at a cost. Fertilisers produced algal blooms and irrigation used up water. We're seeing in some of those areas that in fact were uh, very much helped by the Green Revolution. Now we're seeing water tables in those areas falling quite dramatically, unsustainably. That revolution can't help us again. That cannot be repeated. We don't have the water and we can't afford to be putting the high energy inputs in uh, that we put in the past to achieve the Green Revolution. What we really need now is another version of the Green Revolution, but I don't think science has actually honed in on exactly what that is, what the key components of that are. I think about half the world's population is really worried about where the next meal comes from. But is there another path? Rather than trying to produce ever more food, we could use today's food more wisely. It's quite ironic that you've got a world hunger map and you've got a world um, obesity map. And if you overlay the two, they're actually the reverse of each other. It's a very perverse outcome. Half the world's getting fat and having obesity problems. The other half is starving. In other words, there's no shortage of food in the world. It's just poorly distributed. Now, solving the global food distribution problem is a tough political call, to say the least. But there is another way we treat food very unwisely. We throw an awful lot away. We wealthy Westerners are the greatest offenders. 
it's estimated that 30, 40 percent of the food that is produced in the world is actually wasted. The food wastage occurs right across the production chain, um, so from the farm gate right the way through to the supermarket. So that has to be addressed because that will lighten the load on the extra food that we need to produce. Waste food recycling might be the answer. And that brings us back to maggots. They live off rubbish, turning it into shells of nutritious protein. Of course, we wouldn't eat them, but our farm animals could. This, I think, what we call nutrient recycling, taking our waste nutrients and recycling them into something useful, will be a multi-billion dollar industry within the next decade. You'll think it as normal as recycling your tin and your plastic and your glass. Take slaughterhouse waste. Currently, a lot of the animal parts are discarded. There's as much goodness in bits of a chicken you throw away as the bits you eat. It takes as much water, land and diesel to make the blood and guts as it does the breast meat and the legs. We've got to use it. So, Jason does. He has a fly farm where waste is fed to maggots. So you're developing a whole new set of skills here for farming flies. Yeah, I mean, you know, we farmed our chickens and we worked how to do those. The problem is we never industrialise their natural source of food. I mean, a chicken in a field, it scratches and is trying to get hold of uh, larvae and trying to get hold of ants, because that's what it eats. It needs some animal protein to make itself grow. Instead, we fed them fish. I mean, you know, if a chicken was meant to eat fish, it'd be called a seagull. That's the irony. A meal of maggots is natural for a chook and for fish in farms. Yet, we feed both mashed up precious fish. And a third of all the fish we take out of our seas is ground up and minced into fish meal to put into our non-human food use. So it's mostly to feed chickens and fish and abattoirs and all this type of stuff. Use maggots and there'd be more fish for us. Indeed, solving food wastage could be a large part of solving the food crisis. There's enough food to go around the planet. And there's probably enough food to feed all the people on the planet in 2050 if we stopped wasting food and got the distribution right. And it's something we desperately do need to get right. One looks back in history of civilizations that uh, have not solved their food problems, ancient ones, and they've, uh, they've all disappeared.